so given uh, these requirements uh, from the dev team, so we had to make sure uh, the entire process is automated and uh, get uh, any size of uh, Droid cluster. So, uh, and uh, so we had to shortlist the tools which we leverage and uh, in Athena for uh, uh, infrastructure as a code, we were using Terraform and uh, so Terraform is a pretty uh, the tool are uh, available in the market and uh, it's a community supported uh, tool and uh, so the on the feature sets which we uh, really like on terraform is uh, it clearly separates on the plan from uh, from the execution part and uh, it supports multiple cloud providers although we do work with just aws but uh, we do extend with other tools like ns1 and other things so this integration really helps us to work with one single tool um, also, uh, we could uh, leverage uh, adding of existing resources to the existing code, which we could not do with the cloud formation and other things. If the resources are already created, you cannot inherit that in the, the stacks, but Terraform would allow that to be incorporated. Also, the code could be modularly written, and uh, so that is uh, uh, going to help us in uh, using the, <clears throat> or reducing the code, uh, if at all, code is shared across multiple projects. And uh, also, whenever we run, it's always like a Terraform would always say about the real state available on AWS and then give us a diff between that. So the drift is always known and uh, it's a near real time whenever we try to apply Terraform. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, Terraform uh, also with Terraform, there's equally a set of challenge uh, that you would have to take care of the state management by yourself and get things rolling. So that is where uh, we had built our own um, in-house tool and uh, that is called as Buddy. So this uh, Buddy tool helps us uh, in creating new environments and then writing uh, a consistent state file and also the variable files, which will be applied to the Terraform code at any point of time. So at any point of time, even though the uh, repo would have nearly all of these uh, environments, maybe dev staging, prod and other things, we can always switch between all of these environments using this Buddy tool and uh, it would pre-populate between the prerequisites and uh, the state management files and the lock mechanism of Terraform and also only in, invoke only the appropriate uh, variable file which can get invoked for that cluster. Right, so with that, uh, let me go on the entire end-to-end -end, uh, what happens for this uh, cluster to be created. So we always have code, infrastructure as code in our Bitbucket repos. And so Jenkins would uh, is the guy who would uh, execute in our CICD process. So this guy, he checks out code and then uh, he's going to prep up um, the Terraform and then he's going to invoke Buddy and switch into the environment which we are going to try to create. And then uh, once we kick off uh, the Jenkins, so that is going to complete all the entire deployment and then throw us a dashboard link. And then from that dashboard link, we can get to the cluster and uh, try to uh, get to our stuff. Right. So now let me go on a detailed step of what happens in the uh, all uh, behind the stages. Right. So when Jenkins kick in, so we have uh, two set of stages. One is the prerequisites and uh, the main Droid class creation. So as part of the prerequisites, so uh, we create the metadata store, which is the Postgres SQL. And uh, there's a S3 bucket, which is used for the deep store. So these two get created. And then uh, we have a bunch of uh, code, uh, which just does, uh, it pulls from the repo and uh, uh, creates a tar file and then uploads that to the S3 bucket, which was created. And then we do have a Lambda script, which would go and log into the metadata base and create the database and a user, user and a password so that we can log into that database. Right, suppose that then uh, the Terraform is gonna kick off uh, and create the main Droid cluster. So it's basically a Zookeeper cluster, which gets uh, kicked off and then correspondingly all the four different clusters, which we saw in the architecture. And uh, we also create an um, application load balancer, and then we would have a target group for the router service to be behind that target group. And uh, yeah, so moving on and then saying like, what would happen with the, each cluster creation, right? So the Droid clusters, as we said, that Terraform is uh, so modular, we could just write one single module for the entire Druid service, and it would uh, take care based on uh, the instance type and uh, whatever service needs to be run and then initialize that. So this process goes into two phases. One is the cloud init stage. In the cloud init stage, uh, we initially do the OS dependency package uh, installation, like the Java, Perl, and other things which you need as a dependency. And then um, it based on the instance type and the service type. By service type, we mean a non-data type or a data type of node, especially the historical node. In this case, we would need a storage uh, disk to be also attached and uh, 
also try to prep that and uh, create a data directory along with the, the normal log folder directory. So uh, when uh, the cloud edit runs, so it would identify based on the instance type. We do have different uh, 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 layout types which we have defined because uh, we run everything in AWS. So based on uh, the T3, uh, we have a different disk layout type. When we see uh, uh, M5, it is a different uh, layout type. While uh, if it's an i3, i3 comes with its own hard disk, so it can use that hard disk itself to create a data directory and a log directory. So those uh, disk layout types gets automatically assigned based on the disk instance type. So it uh, formats the disk and uh, configures the disk, then formats the partitions and then mounts the partitions to the respective directory folders. And then uh, it moves to the second stage where a uh, boot shell script gets run. And there's uh, initially the Druid binaries get downloaded from the Apache bin uh, binary uh, archives. And then uh, we uh, download the config file from the S3 bucket, which was uploaded previously. And then uh, we also, uh, in the config file, uh, Tarzi file, when we unwrap that or uh, unbundle that, we will also have uh, binary scripts, which uh, are all uh, basically supervisor uh, uh, related scripts which will execute. So these binaries are also coupled to the binary folder. And then uh, on the config files, so based on the resources available on each of those instances, right? So based on instance type, the CPU, RAM, and storage size will all vary. And then based on that, we will calculate what values to be changed on per config files. And then based on service, uh, what is gonna run on that, that very specific config for that also gets changed. So we go and calculate all of that and then uh, both suppose that we do that uh, install of uh, file beat for, uh, and uh, log forwarder. So we use Prometheus for the monitoring and uh, file beat log, which is gonna be the log forwarder and it sends to the ELK stack for that. And uh, based on the service name, which is passed to the uh, <coughs> Droid uh, from the Terraform. So we just invoke the appropriate uh, start script via this, uh, which is the supervisor script and uh, the supervisor will keep um, that service running all the time. So now uh, I think uh, enough of all the talks. So let's see how the entire process happens on a CICD flow, right? So this is a automated uh, and uh, recorded session at least. Uh, so I just have a uh, one and a half minute uh, video. But the actual uh, create uh, takes um, nearly seven to eight minutes. Uh, to create the test bed uh, on the CI/CD to get the dashboard link, while uh, it takes uh, two minutes for the Zookeeper cluster to get into a quorum, and then uh, uh, two to three minutes at least, uh, and then uh, at least uh, every Druid service node it takes two minutes once the Zookeeper comes up to go and uh, connect to them and uh, uh, get their configs updated, and so overall it takes five minutes for the entire cluster to stabilize and then come back. And um, as you can see, uh, whenever uh, this uh, code runs, so it would ask for a confirmation because we need to make sure uh, what are all the resources gets created. We get the entire dump of uh, that from Terraform. And then only once you confirm that, you would proceed to create that. And uh, this is the dashboard URL, which gets spit out uh, post uh, the entire cluster creation. <clears throat> 